So a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people are asking me, is this a bubble that we're in right now? And is it gonna burst? And when it does burst, can I like swoop in and buy all the cheap houses like what happened in 07 and 08? Hi, I'm Tiffany Moore. I'm a realtor right here in Austin, Texas. Um, I get questions from a ton of people on whether we're in a bubble right now, if it's gonna burst, and if they should wait to buy a home um, until that happens and they can like get a home really cheap. So we're gonna talk about all that today. So I'm gonna recap um, an article from CNN that talks about this topic specifically. I'm gonna link to it in the comments below. So if you wanna read it in more details, feel free to do that. But this is basically gonna summarize what is going on in the market nationwide. And next week, I'm gonna video coming out that's gonna talk about what's happening locally in the Austin market. So let's just get this out of the way. One, it's not a bubble, so it's not gonna burst. If that's the only reason you came to watch this video, you can go about the rest of your day. We're gonna talk about some differences between the madness that happened before the Great Recession in like 07, 08 versus what is going on in the market right now. So one of the first issues, and this is something that I talk to my clients about a lot, is when we were in the mid 2000s, one of the things that contributed to like the huge bubble and then it bursting was that there was just a huge oversupply of homes. So at the peak of all the madness in the mid 2000s, um, we had an inventory of about 2 million homes at one time. Right now, we have the complete opposite situation. So nationwide, and especially in Austin, we have a huge supply and demand discrepancy. So we have very high demand and very low supply of homes. Um, like I said, at the peak in the early 2000s or the mid 2000s, the inventory of homes was about 2 million. Right now, it's about 1.6 million. So we have much fewer homes than we did then. And we also have many more people looking to buy. So it's kind of a twofold situation that's going on right now. Another major factor was that lenders were, one, um, lending money to people who didn't have any business borrowing money. So they were writing bad mortgages, um, their underwriting requirements were really low and lax. Since then, we've put a lot of rules and regulations in place to make sure that doesn't happen. So before, we were having people buy homes putting like 0% down and having adjustable rate mortgages and basically whatever they could do to buy a home. And they were buying like two, three, and four homes because the underwriting guidelines were so lax that they could afford to. Um, and now we have fixed a lot of those rules and regulations. Underwriters and lenders are being much more cautious and only lending money to people who they think will actually be able to pay them back. So it's good for the economy. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt when you are buying a home because they're gonna ask for a ton of documentation, especially if you are like a small business owner or an independent contractor. That's what I am. I just refinanced my house and it was like, I had to give them every single document I've ever had about my income since the day I was born, plus a pint of blood, plus a lock of hair, and I had to promise them my kidney next year. So it is a lot of information, documentation they require, but we're trying to prevent the big crash that happened in the mid 2000s. So kind of tagging along to that last point that we talked about where lenders were just like lending money to anyone and everyone, that artificially drove up the demand for houses. So instead of it just being like, oh, this one family is moving to Austin, they need to buy a house. Instead, it was like, oh, this one dude with uh, no job, no income is all of a sudden buying four and five houses, like as investment properties that are just sitting there vacant or people are renting them out. Um, but basically that's what was happening before is that there, there was a high demand, but it was, it was like an artificial demand because these people couldn't actually afford to buy houses. And actually these, uh, borrowers, these loans were called ninja loans because it was no income, no job and no assets. People with no income, no job and no assets were actually getting loans to buy a home. Um, and so then they were, they were just like, oh, cool. I'll buy four and five homes. Um, we do not have that today. So there have been no ninja loans. Um, the prevalence of that is like zero to very, very low. I don't know what the case would be for you to even be able to get a loan if you have no job, no income, no assets. It seems like it would be pretty impossible right now. But that was another thing that was like falsely contributing to this supposed high demand was that people who couldn't afford to buy houses are just like buying up all the houses, even though they had no job, no income, no assets. That's just not happening right now. 
So the type of loan that people are using to buy their homes has drastically changed as well. So right now, most folks are buying homes with a conventional fixed loan, which means that the interest rate is fixed. Once you lock it in, it is never going to change for the life of the loan. And interest rates are really low right now. Um, so if you are buying a home, you're locking in that interest rate for the next 20, 30 years, however long your, uh, you know, the term is on your loan. What was happening in the mid 2000s was that a lot of people had adjustable rate mortgages, meaning as the market uh, increased or decreased, their uh, interest rate would increase or decrease. So 21% of the market in 2006, 21% of those loans were adjustable rate mortgages. And then as interest rates went up, then uh, people's mortgage payments went up. And so all of a sudden you have the ninja loans that we just talked about, no job, no income, no assets, think they can afford these homes, but then the interest rates start going up and all of a sudden they can't afford the homes at all, they can't make payments on all of them, and then everything just kind of started to trickle down from there. So compare that to today where like only 2% of mortgages are adjustable rate mortgages. By far, everyone that I'm seeing and that I'm working with is using conventional loans, either 15 or 30 year loans. Um, no one is working with adjustable rate mortgages right now. So that is also helping to keep payments stable. Um, other than, uh, you know, in Texas, we have property taxes instead of income taxes. So that is the only thing that could be variable in your monthly payment. But once your interest rate is locked in with a conventional loan, your principal and your interest is going to stay the same for the life of the loan. So this kind of ties into the other issues that we've talked about. We're getting ninja loans, people that can't afford homes, just buying up like four and five homes. Another major factor in the mid 2000s was mortgage debt was about 7% of a household's total disposable income. So that is a really high percentage to have your debt for your mortgage. And when that happens, when you're stretched thin, any kind of variable, like we talked about, a lot of these folks who are having adjustable rate mortgages, any variable or change is going to make it really hard for you to stay on track and pay those mortgage payments. Right now, mortgage debt accounts for 2.45% of disposable income for households. This is in early 2021. So it's basically like less than half of what it was in the mid 2000s. When this happens, you're not as likely to um, have to sell your house when there's a decline in the housing market. We're going to see fewer defaults and fewer fire sales. So when I talk to folks who are waiting for the bubble to burst so they can like swoop in and buy all the foreclosures, because that's what happened in like 2008, 2009, I hate to break their heart, but that is just not going to happen right now. So people aren't as leveraged as they were before. They're not borrowing as much money. They're putting more money down and they are better qualified for their loans right now. So the bank is no longer lending to people who are the ninja loans, the no income, no job, no assets. You actually have to prove that you can afford this house um, and you, are, you actually have to put some um, money down. So other than like VA loans where you, you can put zero money down, which is 100% what we owe to our troops. I'm so excited that we have those programs for them. Um, they deserve to put no money down. Everyone else, y'all need to put some money down in your house and the bank needs to know that you can pay it back. Another piece of this is that if a homeowner did default on their payments, if the home went into foreclosure or was about to be foreclosed on, the market had already tanked. And so if they were to go to sell it, um, they're not gonna get any money for it because they have the opposite supply and demand issue. They had way too much supply and not as much demand. Um, so you really couldn't buy or sell your house or what you wanted to. Right now we have the opposite problem. So it's going to be fewer folks who aren't able to make their payments um, and may have to you know, sell their house to pay off the loan. If that happens and someone has to sell their house, prices have gone up like 20% in the last year. So the market is exploding right now because we have the opposite issue. We have a very high demand and a very low supply. So anyone who's in trouble with their mortgage right now and needs to sell their home to get out from under it is not gonna have any trouble selling it for market value. Unfortunately, there are just no deals to get right now. There are no diamonds in the rough. There's no like secret housing code or something like that where you can kind of swoop in and get this awesome deal that no one's ever heard of. Someone would have found it by now. And if you're finding a home that's like super cheap for some reason, there's a reason. So basically, 
Prices don't decline when we have a shortage, whether we're talking about houses, eggs, butter, milk. If there is, well, a chicken. Chicken is a really good example right now. So there's like a shortage of chickens right now um, because we had this huge freeze in February that literally killed a million chickens. And the chickens are not able to lay eggs fast enough to supply um, all the chicken that we like to eat. There's especially a shortage of chicken wings. And so a lot of like restaurants and stuff are having to go to like boneless wings. So this is an example of like, this is just simple economics. When there is a very low supply and a very high demand, prices are going up. Chicken is the most expensive that it's ever been right now because we're having the same issue. Now, luckily we're not having chicken bidding wars um, maybe the grocery stores are, I don't know. I'm not bidding anyone else for chicken. But what I'm trying to say is that if you have a very low supply and a very high demand, that's just gonna keep driving prices up. Prices are not gonna drop when the demand exceeds the supply. So where we're at right now, I'm gonna look away for some numbers real quick. Uh, so at the end of June, we had 1.25 million existing homes on the market total nationwide. That's down 19% from June of 2020. So June of 2020, obviously we're in the middle of like the madness, the pandemic that was going on. We're on the road to recovery. Um, so you would think that we would have more homes on the market, but we don't. We have a fifth fewer homes on the market to sell. So basically this is a 2.6 month supply of homes and what that means if you ever hear realtors talking about inventory we have a shortage of inventory or the inventory is only two months supply that means of all the homes that are on the market right now if no other homes came on it would take us 2.6 months to sell everything on the market right now so what economists consider a balanced market is six months supply six months of inventory on the market right now we have 2.6 months um, and that means, again, that we have a very low supply and a very high demand. So this is a very ripe seller's market nationwide. I'll tell you in Austin right now, we have 0.6 months supply of inventory on the market. Not 2.6, 0.6. So of all the homes that are on the market right now in Austin, it would take us like two weeks to sell them all, which is insane. Like I said, a balanced market is six months supply. That means that it's not a buyer's market, it's not a seller's market, everyone is pretty much on equal playing grounds and there's no like supply and demand issues. So there are a few um, factors that show us that this trend may be kind of self-correcting, that the market may be slowing a tiny bit nationwide. We're gonna exclude Austin from this because Austin uh, is not really included in these numbers. So we're gonna talk about nationwide, what is happening and how the market may be kind of cooling slightly. Don't get excited. So for the third month in a row in June, new homes, like new construction home sales declined. So three months in a row, those sales declined. That indicates that the market is cooling a little bit. And existing home sales declined for four months in a row before we saw a slight uptick in June of this year. So what's happening because of the supply and demand issue, when we talk about very low supply, prices are gonna continue to go up. Some buyers are just priced out of the market right now. So kind of what's happening in Austin is I talked to a few folks who like, oh, I've been wanting to move to Austin for a year. We started talking about it like nine months ago, year and a half ago, I wish we had done it then. I'm like, yeah, I wish that you had too because prices have gone up 25% since when you started looking to where we're at now. And that's a low estimate. That's not even the actual real number in Austin. I'm just trying to use something that's a little bit realistic. Um, so unless your paycheck has gone up 25% or you just decided that you wanna spend 25% more in a house, that's like a $400,000 house is now $500,000. So a lot of buyers are not buying right now either because they just don't want to pay that much for a house or they can't. Um, so we are gonna, we have a little bit less demand, um, which is kind of cooling and self-correcting the market. These folks are renting or just deciding not to move to the city that they wanted to move to right now. And for a majority of the country, that may be a good option. Unfortunately for Austin, I don't think that that is a very smart move because our prices are going to continue to increase. They may not increase 25%, but they are not gonna go down. So, just some information about what is happening nationwide. Like I said, next week we're gonna have a video talking about the uh, market in Austin and is it or isn't it a bubble. 
Just to throw some quick numbers out there, in Phoenix and in San Diego, prices increased 25% year over year from June of this year compared to June of last year, and prices in Seattle increased 23%. So this is 100% a nationwide shortage and supply and demand issue. Um, it's even crazier in Austin though. So check in next week and I'll tell you all about that.